Greetings, survivors and friends. I'm Shadow Franks, and welcome to Concept Limbo, episode 19. Another slice of my long-running show-and-tell session, where I prize long-forgotten Rust concepts from their sweaty hiding places and lay them out on a beach towel to dry in the sun. In the previous episode, I explored some novel uses for bean cans, triangle ceiling frames, and the effectiveness of tiny nets. So go and watch that if you haven't already. All of these were community-made concepts, and I've by no means exhausted that pool of ideas. So here I am again with another selection from players just like you. Or maybe normal ones. Then the first two concepts I have for you this time round have certain space saving properties amongst other things. So first, respawning is something we all have to do quite often, some of us more often than others, and so one of the very first things we usually craft is a good old sleeping bag. However, once we're settled into something a little bit more spacious and decidedly less drafty than a bush, it's nice to have some home comforts, like a proper bed, which we do of course have, and which comes with some extra perks. Now, this usually serves most of us quite well, but the problem with both beds and sleeping bags is that only one person can use them at a time. And if you're not careful, your clan's respawn room can end up looking like a very messy sleepover. So wouldn't it be nice to have something with the same sized footprint, but double the respawn value? Enter tier 3, the bunk bed, which would actually have two tiers. And this concept is isn't exactly new, it made a brief appearance in an old bit of face punch artwork and has been posted about many times on the subreddit, with a number of suggestions for how it could be achieved, ranging from an actual bunk bed, surprise surprise, all the way down to just being able to put sleeping bags and beds on shelves which could work well, seeing as how they're almost exactly the right size, and I know you can put them right on top, but that doesn't really help here. But perhaps you could grab a power tool and fit two normal beds together in a perfectly safe and sensible way. Just think about it, so much extra space for activities or roleplay items. Of course, this could well be another one of those things that just helps clans and would eventually be nerfed by making top bunk dwellers lose HP from bashing their heads on the ceiling every time they respawned or something. Talking of bumping the old noggin, there could be a slight issue in that players tend to stand up on whatever they respawn on, and this would need to be handled correctly to prevent exploits or just plain weirdness, maybe having them spawn to the side or something. But at the end of the day, it's the concept of the thing that matters the most. From the bedroom now to the kitchen, and I know I've spoken about expanded cooking facilities in the past with Face Bunch's own concepts for ovens and the like, and tier 2 cooking is still on the roadmap for us to experience at some undetermined point in the future. But this hasn't stopped the community from chipping in with some decent ideas, and here for instance is a concept for a cook pot posted on Reddit by Zanan at the beginning of 2017 because, as he says, the current hunger and farming system is tedious, unenjoyable and the most efficient way to replenish hunger is suicide. The great thing about a cook pot is that it could serve as an upgrade to an existing campfire, so it wouldn't take up any more room, and would allow players to combine ingredients to make various dishes, such as pumpkin or meat stew. Not sure why you'd want to stew a boater bag, though. A bit leathery. Anyway, the idea is that cooked meals should restore significant hunger and health when consumed, but I think there needs to be a bit more incentive for players to put in the extra effort needed, so I'd expect to see special buffs or boosts depending on the recipe, such as higher damage, night vision, or faster gathering. They could be like natural steroids or steroids. I can just imagine some performance boosting recipes now. Magic mushroom soup bangers and hash, a nice crack of lamb, and of course pies. But seriously, Face Punch have since suggested something similar on the roadmap for Tier 2 cooking, with complicated recipes giving temporary bonuses to things like max health, speed, or radiation resistance, so I'm not just cooking this up. Anyway, even if you didn't need a boost at the time, it would at least give you something else to do during the crippling void of Rust's long, dark, pitch black abyssal nights. Or you could just spend that time planning ahead for the next day. You see, Rust Island has arguably become easier to navigate of late thanks to inbuilt compasses and being able to know exactly where you and your teammates are at any given time. Sadly though, gone are the days when you could craft a physical map, draw some detailed anatomical sketches on it, and give it to a friend. This also means that if you've got some incredibly clever strategies that involve pincer movements, ambushes, and complex infiltration techniques, then you don't really have an easy in-game game way to explain them visually anymore. If only we had a plan.
planning table to scrawl all this stuff on, eh? Well, just such a thing was suggested not two months ago on the subreddit by Bambus Bow. the idea being that it would function just like the in-game map, except everyone would be able to see it, scroll it around and scribble on it. And I'm wondering if he'd been playing a bit of Sea of Thieves before he made the suggestion, because that's more or less how things are handled there. Being able to plan raids, note the location of feisty neighbours or leave directions for offline teammates would be rather handy and it would certainly get tables to earn their keep for taking up so much space. An alternative, if you've got more wall than floor space, and something that's been suggested more times than I've had hot pies, is a kind of map frame, or at least some way of hanging up a section of the island without having to resort to a plug-in. But do you think something like this would help or not? Let me know in the comments. The next two concepts I have to show you are both useful for closing the gap between you and other players, which may not sound that appealing, but well, you'll, you'll see. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. We already have binoculars. Isn't this pretty redundant? Well, let me answer your question with another question. Would any self-respecting pirate be seen dead with anything less? Of course not. Besides, I just like the artwork for this one, and that's the main reason why I'm showing you. Yeah, that's pretty much the only reason why I'm showing you. Submitted to Reddit by user actor Keat over three years ago now, and well before binoculars arrived on the scene, this would instead be a craftable item. And as the quote says, if you can see far, you can see the future. If you can see the future, you could see your own death. Hang on, I thought the farther away something you're looking at is the further back in time it's supposed to be. Uh, but anyway, I agree with the death thing, definitely. I mean, this is rust. And I suppose it could have other uses, such as being a poor man's scope or something. Funnily enough, later on in the same year, something similar surfaced in a face punch concept for a crafted scope. Was it an influence? I don't know. From seeing to hearing now, and of course the number one thing we need in Rust is to be able to hear people from further away, because of course they usually have so many valuable things to tell us. Actually, I'd rather give a box of Vuvuzelas and a crate of Red Bull to a room full of hyperactive five-year-olds. But won't you just look at this amazing concept art from Cyceric on the subreddit in 2017? This is the Mega Cone, and the disclaimer is that it's not for ear RAPE, and thank heavens he made that clear. Couldn't have it being abused now, could we? I think what he was getting at, though, was that it wouldn't actually make you louder, just audible from farther away so then you could be offensive to even more people with the same amount of effort. Great! I wonder what the aim cone on it would be, though. Hmm. Now, in the last episode, I showed a couple of trap ideas, including this one, for a hidden wall frame from I'm a Roastia on the subreddit, and I actually found another that he did around the same time that's perhaps a lot cheaper and a little bit more fun. If you're after base security on a budget, then the rake trap might be right up your alley. Although, well, that sounds painful. What I mean is, it could be super effective at slowing down attackers for not much outlay, especially if you leave a few of them lying around. Now, it has been quite a while since I mentioned any concepts for new types of NPC enemies in this series, but there is one from a long time ago that I realize I've never mentioned. Perhaps this is because it's so balls to the wall terrifying that no one dares speak its name. Or perhaps just that I forgot. About three years ago, a chap called Edgard Kuryakov came up with this horrifying entity called the Imitator, and although I can't imagine anything along these lines ever making it into the game, it was a fascinating beast nonetheless, in part because it's slightly reminiscent of the Thing. Described as a sort of mutated insect monster, it would merge with the bodies of dead players in order to bait others into approaching it. It would roam at night holding a torch, which isn't usually a good idea, but if shot at would play dead, attacking quickly if a player went to check its corpse. You might only suspect something if you got a look at its ugly mug first, but imagine reaching a point where you wouldn't trust anything unless it was laying face up. As I say, I've still got quite a few community concepts to go through, but as the next episode is number 20, I've decided I will be taking a special look back at my top 10 things still in Concept Limbo. So sub to the channel, ring the bell, and make sure you don't miss it. I'd love to know what you thought of these concepts and which, if any, you think would enhance the Rusty experience, so 
please leave me a comment and I'll try to get through as many as I can. As you can see, I've got some new art for my channel now and I hope you've enjoyed the horse reveal. These are all thanks to my awesome artist, Excited, and I'll stick a contact for him in the description. Also, a huge thanks to my patrons for supporting me in this journey. There's a link in the description if you'd like to join their ranks. You can find me in all the usual places such as Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and my Steam group. Name your poison. And I shall catch you all soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio!